Telling my brother I killed his sister was the hardest thing ever. I never intentionally wanted to do so, but she had to know at some point. There is no ointment for this. No cure. No Tylenol I could take that could fix me. And no matter how many times I washed my body with soap, it didn't go away. I prayed. I wanted to be like everyone else, but I knew myself and something wasn't right. This feeling was not going away anytime soon. It was here not only at noon, but morning, evening, and night. It was a constant fight, but not with anyone else. Just me, myself, and I. I was watching my life from my window pane, waiting for the pain to somehow disintegrate and I could and would be able to somehow continue on with this lie. But in my mind, I just felt like a guy. All my life, I was told to be who I am. And when I decide to take the stand, everyone wants to take my hands and handcuff them to society's stereotypes and standards. My window pane has heard the countless sights I cried in pain, the times I held my cross and prayed to not stay in this body, but to also be like everybody. My dad had a heart attack. Sitting in the hospital room, the nurse comes in, looks at us one by one, and says, Oh, are these two your sons? I felt a sudden feeling of joy, and my dad proceeds to correct her. That's my daughter. Oh, I'm so sorry, she says to me. What is her name? That's my daughter, Anna. But little did he know, Anna is long gone, is and always was this fake person I painted on that was never really here from the start. My blood was boiling. Listen here, you will refer to me as he, and if everyone has a problem with this, you can leave. I didn't really say that. <laughs> my window pane has heard my dreams and hopes. My window pane has heard me whisper to God and ask why. Why do I wake up not satisfied? Why do I feel like something is missing? Why is it when I speak nobody is listening? It's a phase. Why has my phase been dragged and lasted for so long? I'm waiting for it to be over. I'm tired of getting up and hiding my chest, fighting the urge to cut off my breast. It sounds dramatic, but it's really not, especially when you fought countless nights to untie that knot from around your neck, because suicide is not the answer. Action wasn't taken, but I was almost there. I would stare myself in the mirror and list all the heartache I would have because of this. Being transgender would make my life a living hell. Nobody would accept me or see me as a regular guy, so I might as well throw these feelings on the back burner until I realized. Am I going to live for others or myself? They do not breathe the air in my body that I need to live. They do not wake up and feel the disgust I feel when I see no facial hair and hear a high-pitched voice and shoulders that aren't broad enough. This feeling was like a bra that didn't fit right, like pants that were just too tight. It felt like I was losing sight of who I was. This feeling is like a zit sitting in the middle of your forehead saying, hey, I'm here and I'm not going anywhere. Like underwear that gives you this annoying wedgie and no matter how many times you pick it out, it comes right back. <laughs> like acne on your back and you think, how disgusting. That's how I felt when I saw myself every day.
but I realized that this feeling is not going anywhere. Anytime soon. It would be here not only at noon, but morning, evening, and night, and for the rest of my life. So telling my brother I killed his sister was the best thing I ever did. Thank you.